We've recently made the change here on the channel to doing all of our color management using nodes, as opposed to setting things up in our project settings, which is what we were doing previously. And one of the big questions that has accompanied this change is, what about raw formats? How do I color manage raw formats when I'm working in this way? And specifically, how do I deal with multiple raw formats within a single project? So that's what we're gonna be discussing today. I'm gonna to show you how I handle these multiple raw formats inside of a single project when I'm grading inside of Resolve. So let's dive in and take a look. Right now, I haven't done anything whatsoever. All I've got are my three clips here that indeed come from three different cameras and are all in a raw format. I've got some Blackmagic Raw, I've got some Airy Raw, and I've got some Red. And what I'm gonna do to set up my color management is I kinda wanna work backwards. It's kinda like when you're taking a test and you wanna fill in the easier answers that you know first, build up your confidence, get some of the tests knocked out, and then kinda work your way into the more difficult questions. So what's the easiest thing to solve in terms of how I'm going to be setting up my color management here? Well, I know where I'm going, right? I know I'm going to be outputting, in my case, to Rec. 7 and 9 Gamma 2.2. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to go over to the timeline level of my node graph, which you could do by clicking this rightmost dot at the top of the node graph window, or you could click this drop down menu and select timeline. And I'm going to just drop this preset that I've already saved here in my album. This is a color space transform that is taking me from DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. That's always our working space here on the channel, so we know that one. And we're going out to Rec. 7 or 9, Gamma 2.2. That's always going to be the destination display space that I'm going to be demonstrating for you guys here on the channel. So that's an easy one too. We know that one. Down here, I've got my stock settings that I always use for luminance mapping and for my max input and max output, as well as for my gamut mapping. And I've got forward OOTF turned on, as always. So that's something that really never changes. This piece is always going to be the same. And now we just need to work our way backwards and make sure that we are getting each of these different cameras, each of these different images mapped into the DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate working space that this final output transform is expecting. Okay. Now here's the secret to it. Here's the main thing to understand when you are color managing using nodes as opposed to uh, color managing in your project settings and you're dealing with raw formats. You might know that when you are color managing using project settings and you have raw formats, Resolve just takes over for you. It handles mapping that raw image format into whatever working space you've selected. So you literally don't need to do anything and you can't do anything when you are color managing using your project settings. When we're color managing here in nodes, there's a bit more work involved, but this is sort of emblematic of color managing in nodes in general in that while we might have to do a bit more manual work, we also have more control than we get with our project settings. So what we need to do in this case is go to our file menu and go to our project settings. And I'm gonna to go to this camera raw section here. Now this area right here, I think is the source of a lot of the confusion when it comes to raw formats, color managing using nodes and multiple raw formats when color managing using nodes. There's a very understandable uh, misconception that you are selecting one raw profile from this drop down menu here as your working raw profile. And that's how all of the raw profiles or raw images rather are going to be treated in your project once you've made this selection. That's not the case at all. What this menu is here to do is to tell you, hey, for any of these raw profiles, for each of these raw profiles, how do you want to handle unpacking or debayering that raw format into an RGB space? Okay. So in my case, I've got Airy, Blackmagic, and Red, right? Airy is easy. There's really nothing that I need to do in terms of debayering my Airy because it's always going to debayer into Log C3, Log C4 for an older Airy camera or uh, Wide Gamut 4, Log C4 for an Alexa 35. There actually is an option to decode Log C3 as Log C4. That's fairly advanced and a bit beyond the scope of our conversation today, and there's really no need to mess with it. So I literally don't need to do anything with my Airy raw profile here. It's good to go. Let's take a look at our Blackmagic raw. Here's how I like to handle Blackmagic raw. I'm gonna tell it to decode using project. And for my color science, I'm going to, or rather for my color space, I'm gonna tell it to go directly into DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. No color space transform necessary. This is going to ensure that this file, this image unpacks right into my working space of DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. Okay, I've got that set up and that's really all I need to do. I can leave my white balance as is and I can leave all of my other settings uh, where they are as well. Highlight recovery, that's something that is also probably a bit beyond scope for our conversation today. 
it's something you may prefer to turn on if you have some really hot pinging highlights and they feel like they're clipping out. And remember, that's something you can always go back and turn on later if you're discovering that in your timeline. For now, I'm going to leave it off because I don't think it's particularly applicable to this one Blackmagic Raw shot that I have here in my timeline. Okay, that's my Blackmagic Raw stuff. Now, let's switch over to our red. And as soon as I do this, before I even start looking at my settings here, I just want to prove something out. Let's go back to Blackmagic Raw. All of the custom selections that I just made a moment ago, they're all still there waiting for me. Simply by switching from Blackmagic Raw to red, that doesn't mean Resolve won't know what to do with Blackmagic Raw camera material. It simply means I've switched from specifying what I would like Resolve to do with that material to specifying what I would like Resolve to do with my red material. Does that make sense? So this is not an option of which raw profile am I using. It is an option of how would I like to debayer each of these different types of raw profile. Now, when it comes to red, I've actually already got everything all preset. The only change I'm going to make is set my bit depth to 16. And I've got decode using project already turned on. You may find in your resolve that you're on camera metadata by default. I've set it up to project and I've set my color science, color space, and gamma curve to what red recommends, which is red wide gamut RGB and log 3G10. Okay. Blend bias that can be left at zero. Metadata curves, that's something that unless there's a very explicit creative intent baked in by the production team who you're working with, you can safely turn off. And these other boxes can remain unchecked as well. And really the only other two important boxes to tick are ISO and color temp, because we do want those things to pass forward from set. We want to know what ISO the camera operator or the cinematographer was using, right? Likewise, we want to know what color temperature they were on. If they were on 5600, I don't want to be landing at 3200 by default. So that's a good thing to leave checked as well. And again, now that I've got this set up, I haven't just specified one raw profile. I have properly set up how I'm going to unpack all three of these raw profiles. All right. So I'm going to hit save. And in the case of our Blackmagic Raw, remember, we told it, go ahead and unpack directly into DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate. So our work is done there, right? We can move along to our airy material. And the way that I like to handle input mapping any source, whether it's raw or otherwise, is I like to use Resolve's group function and to use specifically the group free clip function to cook in or to uh, apply my IDT or my input transform. So for my airy material, I'm going to right click on this and say, add into a new group. We're going to call this group airy. I'm now going to go to the leftmost of the four dots that are up here in my node graph. Remember, I only had two before. Now I have two additional, including this leftmost dot, which is what I'm looking for. This is the group preclip section of my new group, right? Group preclip simply means that whatever I do here is going to happen before whatever I do here at the clip level. That's perfect because I want this input transform to be the first thing that happens to my image before any of my grading decisions are applied to it. So what I'm going to do here is create a color space transform. And we're going to go from Airy Wide Gamut 3, Airy Log C3, into DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. No tone mapping is necessary, and white point adaptation isn't necessary either. It's not doing anything, as you can see, but you're free to turn it off if you like. And you can give this a descriptive label if you like. Call it 2 DaVinci Wide Gamut. Sometimes I'll just simply call it in, like so. And we're now set up with our airy raw material. This is good to go. This is good to begin grading. Of course, I got to drop in a look. I got to do my grading, but I do have a sound color management pipeline in place for this shot, as I do for my Black Magic shot, because remember, it's already unpacking directly into DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And that just leaves our red material, which is going to undergo a similar process to what we just did with our Alexa material. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say add into a new group, new camera, new group, right? This one's going to be red. And I'm going to go into my group preclip section drop a color space transform. Input color space is going to be exactly what I specified in my camera raw settings for red. That's going to be red wide gamut RGB, red log 3G10, and we're going to go out to DaVinci wide gamut, DaVinci intermediate, and turn everything else off like so, and we can go ahead and label this in. Okay, that's all there is to it. From here, I can do whatever I like. I can grade in the normal fashion. I can apply a look maybe something from my Voyager LUT pack here upstream of my final output transform. We could use maybe Crucis or Camera. Honestly, any of these will work great, but let's go with uh, Camera for now. There's my look. And I'm now ready to begin grading as I would any other material, raw or otherwise. Because remember, one of my big passion points when it comes to 
setting up color management and managing images, whether they're raw or otherwise, is we want to get away from a camera centric type of color grading approach. And we want to get into an image centric approach so that by the time you're grading, you're in the same color space, regardless of where the color was originally set when the material was captured. It's all been placed onto a level playing field, if you like. And you can focus on the grade and on the image as opposed to on the camera that that image was acquired on. That's really all there is to it. If you take away nothing else from this video, I just want to emphasize this camera raw setting here. This is the source of so much confusion and understandably so that when you select raw profile, you are making an election about which raw format you are going to use and exclusively use in the project. But as we've learned today, that's not the case at all. It's simply allowing you to select how you want to unpack each of these raw profiles respectively. And the selections that you make are going to persist even when you click over to another profile and save out of your project settings completely.